For more on this subject, we are going to bring in Dan Riskin, CTV science and technology expert. Dan, thanks so much for joining us. I know you've been following this story quite closely, as we've just heard from that Coast Guard update, uh, calling this a catastrophic implosion. Uh, of course, we know there, was, there were five souls on board. Dan, let's talk about the science of this the Titan, what it was made of and, and what that means as they're saying that um, that it was a, an implosion that they're looking at perhaps in the water column. What does that mean? Yeah, I mean, I think that one of the things that's happened over the last few days is that the, there were these banging noises and a lot of people sort of had this image in their minds that there were these five people inside a vessel calling for help without power and, and sort of playing through these nightmarish scenarios. And what we have now is more information about what's been going on. People have been listening to that water column very carefully ever since the search began, listening for, for noises like that. And we now know that the vessel suffered a catastrophic hull failure. So it basically imploded under all that pressure. The pressure down at those depths is 300 times what the pressure is at the surface. And so it just, uh, you imagine an explosion, it's the exact opposite of that. It would have imploded and there would have been a huge shockwave as a result of that, uh, which if people were listening, they would have picked up with all of those listening devices and no such noise was ever detected. And so that is very good evidence that this is something that happened early on. And so a scenario that, that is likely is that they were on their way down toward the Titanic and that something happened early on before any kind of search had begun and that it was instantaneous. And so, of course, it's it's tragic no matter how these lives are lost, but that scenario where people were banging uh, seems not to have played out. And so those noises that were detected don't seem to have come from this submersible. And I think that's a really important piece of the puzzle that we now have an answer to. Dan, can you talk to us at all about the Titan? Um, of course, you know, we're not going to speculate at all, but there have been a lot of talk about what it was made of. And, and you talked about um, the pressure and it would obviously take, you know, a significant um, type of, you know, metal. We, I believe it's carbon fiber it was made out of, um, but, you know, to withstand that pressure. Yeah, so you, you need good materials and you need those materials to be, be built well. Uh, and so you've, you've got titanium and carbon fiber built into this. Um, and then it comes down to design. It's got to be built in a way that you can open it and close it so people can get in. But all of those little points of contact become weak, potential weak points. And so, of course, part of the, the big question now will be why did it fail and where did that failure occur? And one of the things that's so scary about uh, materials put to extreme tests like this is that sometimes when you take a material and you expose it to big stresses and then you release those stresses and then you expose it to those big stresses again and you do that over and over, you can weaken the material, you can change its material properties so that it's not as resilient as it was when it was first built. And if you've ever uh, bent a spoon, for example, if you bend a spoon a whole bunch of times and then put it back to its original position, it'll be weaker when you try to bend it again. And so there's the possibility that over time, as this submersible uh, descended to the Titanic multiple times in previous years, that it lost some of its uh, integrity, that the, the materials became less strong than they were before. That's just a hypothesis, but it's one of the questions that they're gonna be going after to try to figure out why it is that this thing had this sudden loss of, of stability and, and suddenly had that implosion happen. Mm -hmm. Dan, I wanna ask you too about um, certifications and, and going forward, you know, there will be a lot of lessons learned from something uh, like this. I imagine they would try to bring the, the pieces to the surface if, if they can with some of that equipment that's down there. Talk to us about that. And then, you know, going forward, um, if you think certification process or something would be looked at. You know what? I mean, it's lying on the ocean floor 1,600 feet from the Titanic. And so that's an iconic reminder of the failure of engineering and what comes from that. So uh, after the Titanic sank in 1912, uh, things changed. The regulations changed. The number of lifeboats you had to have on board had to be equivalent to the number of people you had on board. There were some basic rules of uh, maritime law that changed as a result of the Titanic because no one wanted to see that happen again. So it's early days uh, and, and obviously there's gonna be a period of mourning, but inevitably from tragedies like this, 
uh, regulations come in that make the world safer for the future. And ultimately, what they were doing was honorable. It's exploring and it's trying to, to see the world in a way no one's ever seen it before. And so uh, they were pioneers and they were taking risks. And uh, we all win when, when people take risks because we further our knowledge and, and our species uh, is capable of new things. So this won't be uh, lost. Uh, regulations will change and, and we'll see a better future as a result of it. But today, of course, it's just a very sad day. It certainly is. Yeah, we'll certainly keep the victims and their families in our thoughts today as we continue to cover this story. Dan, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge you. with us today. Dan Riskin, CTV science and technology expert.